The next topic on the board, this is the one that I'm sure that you guys thought I might have been talking about, but that would be Mario Cristobal heading back to Miami. Now, we talked about this some on the Sunday Reaction Show, but it was announced, of course, officially, I believe on Monday, and then on Tuesday, they announced Cristobal, let him come out and have a press conference and whatnot. The president at Miami introduced him because they do not have their athletic director hired done, but that's the way that they want this done, right? They wanted the coach in place first, and then they're going to bring in their AD, and the AD, I believe, is going to be Dan uh, Radakovich, who is the guy at Clemson right now, and if they get him, that is an absolute home run hire. But the way the stories that have come out about this from the Athletic have been absolutely hilarious. Uh, Miami has never been willing to spend like this for their football program. They just haven't. They've never needed to, and and they have not been able to keep up with the current landscape of college football, which which does crack me up a little bit because they never felt the need to be a part of that. This is a private institution. They do things their way. It is what it is. Well, now they have decided that they want to get back involved. And part of this is because, as The Athletic has reported, uh, the health system during the pandemic profited, I believe it said, $400 million in the last year, which is kind of crazy to think about. And they are taking a large chunk of that. They're paying out the $8 million for Manny Diaz, they're paying out Cristobal $9 million to get out of his deal at Oregon, and they're paying Manny 10 years, $8 million a year guaranteed. That is $80 million guaranteed right there. And they're going to do all the different things that it takes in order to build a winner at Miami. This is monster. Like, if Miami is willing to, to be a big boy and actually show up and actually put the uh, resources required into building a big-time football power, they can do that. They can be a football power because a lot of this talent that leaves down there ends up going to Alabama and Georgia and Ohio State, et cetera, et cetera, right? This is, this is the perfect hire at the perfect time for Miami. Now, with the way that this was all done, if you look at typical board of trustees, I was listening to Stephen Godfrey talk about this. Normal board of trustees, you maybe got 10, 12, at most, maybe 15 Board of Trustees members at, at certain big-time football programs. At Miami, I mean, they they got like 60 guys that are considered part of their Board of Trustees. It is insane. They got boosters all over the place, all this different stuff. But what they had in this situation was they had like two or three big-time guys that were really making the hire and were letting everybody else feel like they were a part of it, but it was really run by just a couple of guys. And I think that that's the smart way to go about it, Right. You, all of you guys over here talk about this. I'm going to get the real meat and bones done here, right? And that makes perfect sense. You can talk all you want to about eh, Cristobal's overrated, this and that. I will tell you what he is not overrated as, and that is a program builder. And he is also not overrated as a recruiter. What he was able to do at Oregon on a national level was almost ridiculous. And you can say it was Nike, you can say it was whatever, but are you really going to be able to get those kind of athletes to come up to Eugene, Oregon without having a guy that they can really connect to that they really believe in? I don't think so. I really don't think so. They have got top-flight NFL guys at Oregon right now because of Cristobal. If he could recruit every hour of every day, he would because he understands that is the lifeblood of, the, of, of, a, excuse me, of a program, and that's what you need at Miami right now. You need somebody that's going to be recruiting those guys that are in-state. You can drive an hour and find an entire roster full of guys that are capable of playing at a high level for you. Just right down there in South Dade County. I mean, it's it's ridiculous what they can get done. Now, that's not going to keep Alabama and Ohio State and Georgia and whoever else away from down there, but you can switch a few of them here and there. And I think that this is going to be a big-time thing. Now, you don't have to be X's and O's. You don't have to be whatever. He is going to have to hire some big-time coordinators to make sure that they get this thing right. But as far as building the foundation again, because that foundation has been fractured and ruined for a long, long time, they got the right guy to be able to come in and clean it up, right? Mark Richt is one thing. This guy is something else. Mark Richt is, is build the foundation, uh, get the culture right, all that kind of stuff. But it's not build a championship football program. That's, that's not what Mark Richt does. Uh, at least not anymore. He did it initially at Georgia, but it, it, there's a difference between what Mark Rick does and what guys like Kirby Smart and Mario Cristobal do. This is massive for Miami. 
So I would imagine that they will get the AD that they want because they're going to pay out the wazoo for it. And I will be curious to see what's going to happen. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.